Hello, I am Dr. Nirja Bhatla. I am Professor and Head of the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences and also heading the Division of Gynae Oncology here at AIMS and at NCI Jhajjar. Cervical cancer is presently the second most common cancer among women in India. Globally, there are about 600,000 cases every year and India contributes 123,000 of them it is estimated and a large proportion of them die, 77,000 deaths or so have been estimated in the year 2020. It is, uh, seems to be relatively more common amongst the rural women, but there is also a large proportion of cases in the urban and because the population based cancer registries are not uniformly distributed, it's hard to exactly estimate this burden where it is coming from. But we do see a number of cases in the urban areas now from young girls who have delayed pregnancies, gone to infertility treatments and found to have been to be harboring this cancer. So in the West and in the developed countries, cervical cancer ceased to be a problem because of involving, uh, because of instituting a national program for cytology screening. It's a very preventable disease because it has a long precancerous phase in which one can intervene and so it's actually truly preventable because you prevent the cancer for de from developing. So if you do a pap smear every three years, it was found that you could reduce the burden by about 93% and that was the system being followed. But in India, we could never really institute that because putting in the cytology network like that requires a lot of infrastructure, a lot of trained people, which we did not have the resources for. Then came the era of the visual inspection with acetic acid, a simple test which was shown to have the same level of detection, but it was not necessarily as specific, so a lot of false positives. So the national program presently says screen with VIA, but having said so, we have problems, we have to train and retrain health workers to maintain standards, we have to develop secondary linkages because those who are positive need to be further screened to see do they actually have disease and then if they have disease they have to be treated. Then women don't know about it, they are not aware about it, so they don't necessarily comply with the invitation for screening, even so. So there is a long way to go before people can understand the concept of screening as a universal requirement. And now we have a vaccine, a very effective vaccine, but it has been constrained by costs. More recently, we've had an Indian vaccine, which is definitely far more affordable. So let's hope that this will roll out in the government program. So in India, the concept of vaccines is well taken. People understand them, people go get them actively, proactively look for them for childhood vaccination. And we have a whole network of uh, uh, the vaccine storage, transport, cold chain, the vaccinators and so on. So the only issue here is that the HPV vaccine is an adolescent vaccine. So that's not an age group that is normally being targeted. But in Sikkim and in Punjab as well, they have had programs which have shown that it can be very successfully rolled out with a 96-97% uh, uptake. So the National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization, NTAGI, has approved this vaccination for inclusion in the national program. And uh, there is also already a plan for rolling it out in phases. But we have to wait for the affordable vaccines to be available in the numbers that we have for vaccinating each cohort and taking it forward. And meanwhile, of course, the private market has to be also encouraged to increase the numbers because we have very reassuring data now. Data from Sweden where the vaccine program was started as a trial mode and where they have very systematic data keeping have shown that their vaccinated population has an 88% reduction in the risk of cervical cancer compared to the unvaccinated women. And the younger they are, the better this it is. And similarly, data has come from the UK national program, which has very convincingly shown that vaccination of girls under 15 years has caused almost a 95-97% reduction in the risk of cervical cancer and of high-grade CIN, which is the precursor lesion. So, in fact, you can almost say that they have eliminated cervical cancer in girls who were born after 1995 by the simple method of vaccination. 
And today we are in the era of fewer doses. We started with the vaccine as a three dose. And then we found, in fact, the Indian trial contributed hugely to this uh, database that two doses were as good as three doses. And the WHO changed the recommendation to two doses. And subsequently now, following on the girls who received only one dose, we have convincing data that even one dose could be good enough. So, if, as of now, an off-label recommendation even for single dose all the way till 20 years is there. And it will be further strengthened when more data comes by the end of 2024 or 25. Cervical so ca cancer screening and treatment is a more uh, difficult thing to do. Difficult because uh, there is a requirement to assess the screen tests, which are three, the pap smear, the VIA, the HPV test, and to further triage them to determine which of them is actually at risk of harboring disease. And having done so by another test like putting in a sophisticated technologies like genotyping or by doing a colposcopy in which you examine the cervix under magnification or by doing just a simple visual inspection again. There are several options there which have to be used and then the positives have to be treated. And bringing back women each time for a test tends to have a lot of loss to follow up. So the present recommendation is to encourage a single visit approach and a screen and treat. So you have defined categories who are suitable for the same day. And we have a lot of new devices coming up now, portable colposcopes, battery powered ones which can be taken out into the periphery. If we envisage not just the 700 districts in the country, but actually each of the PHCs and the sub-centers and we think of going down to each last mile facility, there's an enormous requirement really. And we have shown that health workers can be trained to use these portable colposcopes. They can be trained to capture the images. The images can be uploaded and seen by an expert sitting at a, somewhere, maybe even 100 miles and more away who can guide them based on those pictures as to which women need to be brought into the secondary facility and which women can be safely allowed to go home. So we have all this already, but it's a question of scaling up and putting it out there. So portable colposcopes are there, portable thermal ablators are there. So even in situations where you have a power outage, the battery runs for a good five to eight hours and uh, enables the entire session to be completed. So thermal ablators are available, which will just freeze the cervix for simple lesions. And uh, these can save many women from the need to travel and can ensure compliance because the goal of WHO program is 90% to be vaccinated, 70% of women to be screened between 35 and 45 and 90% of those who have been found to have a lesion to get treated. With this also brings me to another very important point which is the affordable HPV tests. So you know Zurhausen got the Nobel Prize for discovering that HPV was the necessary cause of cervical cancer, human papilloma virus, very few cancers have a viral etiology. And once that was determined it was only a matter of time before we got the vaccines to prevent that infection and we got the tests to detect the women who harbor it. And it's a very common infection, 80% of women will get it but 10% only are going to retain it as a persistent infection, not be able to clear it by their own immunity as you clear a flu. And these 10% are the ones we want to find and treat. So the HPV tests presently also are expensive and we are on the lookout for the indigenous tests, affordable tests. And if you just look at the number of women between 35 and 45 who need these tests at least twice as per WHO modeling and you look beyond this country to the rest of the world, Africa has even higher rates than we do and so on. I think there's an enormous need for finding HPV tests new technologies for triage, already there's a lot, lot of work to develop the lateral flow which are the true point of care tests that will help all this to happen what I've discussed. And so with a combination of screening the girls, uh, uh, sorry, vaccinating the girls and screening the older women, I think we will be well on the road to cervical cancer elimination. The important goal by WHO is to put these targets in place by 2030. And if we do that, then we can certainly hope in the next few decades to see this become a rare cancer and not a major public health problem.